Hello everybody, I hope you like my set design today. This took way longer than it should have. A24, you've probably heard of them. They make absolute masterpieces like Moonlight, Everything Everywhere, You Know the Rest, Lady Bird, insert your favorite A24 movie here. That one's the best one. They can't make a bad movie. Or can they? A very quick explanation just for background purposes, A24 is an independent film studio that started in 2012. An indie studio basically means it's not Universal, Paramount, Warner Brothers, Sony, or Disney. Or Tim Allen, or climate change. And because of that, they have significantly lower budgets. A24 is arguably one of, if not the biggest independent studio right now, or at least the most mainstream. But they can be much, much smaller, all the way down to your local student filmmaking mutual on Instagram. Instagram. You know the one. The meaning of an indie movie has shifted a little bit over time. I'm not going to go into any more detail, but you can pause and read this breakdown I found on Reddit that does a pretty good job explaining it. So for all intents and purposes, I will be referring to A24 as an independent studio. See, people making movies funded by independent studios usually get a little bit more freedom and creative control to make the movie how they want to. And indie studios are much more likely to pick up on projects that bigger studios wouldn't. So they're known to take risks on ideas that could be seen as a little bit more strange. This could go one of two ways. You end up with an almost universally loved award-winning film that explains explores familial ties through multi-dimensional travel, or you get male person bad. I've never actually seen men, I've just heard very mixed reviews. When a new A24 movie comes out, it's like Christmas friggin' day for everybody that uses Letterboxd. Everyone is trying to be the first to break new grounds using words like nuance, color grade, juxtaposition, chiaroscuro, avant-garde, deus ex machina. Which is fair, there's a reason why so many people like these movies. It's because A24 makes good movies. Or do they? In the process of making a movie, what does A24 actually do? You see, it depends. A24 isn't only a production company, they're actually more so a distribution company. Which are two separate things in a movie's lifespan from conception all the way to release on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, and digital. When it comes to A24, Lionsgate is actually their physical media distributor for the most part, but that's not super important to the point right now. A production company is in charge of the actual making of the movie, so like screenwriting, location scouting, recording video, audio, editing, visual effects, and everything in betwixt. There might be some things that they outsource to other companies, but they are the ones that are in charge of making sure all of that goes smoothly. And one film can have multiple production companies working on it. On the other hand, the distributor is in charge of distribution getting it to theaters, advertisement, release dates, things like that. Most of the time, a movie only has one distributor. They can have two, but it is very, very rare. I'll link an article down below that explains it more, but that's the gist and all you need to know right now. Both play a super important role. Obviously, production makes sure it's an actually good movie that people want to watch and enjoy, but distribution makes sure that people are actually seeing that movie that a lot of effort and work went into. A24 is both. So now the question goes from, does A24 make good movies, to how many movies did A24 technically make? Out of 140 movies distributed by A24, only about 40 were also produced by them. They seem to be producing a lot more lately, which may have something to do with why they've gotten a lot more recognition, and why it could be debated that they are putting out better movies than they did when they first started, and I do have a little bit of data that backs that up towards the end of this video. A lot of the movies you've probably heard of from A24 were probably produced by them as well. Everything Everywhere All at Once, X, The Whale, The Lighthouse, Uncut Gems. But there are some heavy hitters that were just distributed by them, like Lady Bird, Talk to Me, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Minari the Witch. Now I'm not denying that they still play a huge role in the movie's success even when they're just the distributor, because even saying just the distributor downplays the role that they play severely. They still have to have faith in the movie that they're taking to distribute and deciding to stamp their name on forever. But they didn't technically make the movie, so if we are asking the question, 
does A24 make good movies? Can we even count the movies that they didn't technically make? Or should the question be rephrased entirely, does A24 back good movies? The answer to that is, not all of them. Look, I'm not here to necessarily play movie critic right now, but obviously no matter who you are, there's gotta be at least one movie that A24 had a hand on that you didn't like or wouldn't like. If you make the blanket statement, A24 doesn't have a bad movie, you're objectively wrong. You probably haven't even heard of half the movies on this Rotten Tomatoes list ranking all 100 plus of A24's movies. What are some of those bad movies? Critically speaking, The Vanishing of Sydney Hall has an 11% on Rotten Tomatoes, Revenge of the Green Dragons 15%, The Sea of Trees 17 I'm just naming names, I haven't heard of any of these. Audience score, False Positive has a 19%, Stars at Noon 14%, Woodshock 25%. It does go to show that all those I just mentioned were just distributed by A24 and were all from 2017 or before. And I know Rotten Tomatoes is a flawed system, rarely do I take their word as gospel, but it gives a good overview of the movies and their ratings for this purpose. Exhibit A, they gave the death of Dick Long as 75% and that is one of the most messed up, disgusting, unfunny movies I've ever seen. So A24 is capable of having not good movies, so why don't we hear about these, at least nowhere near as much as we hear about the good ones. Personally, I think it comes down to three things. Reason one being they're just smaller releases, smaller ad campaigns, so the general public and even a lot of people that are into film in general just haven't heard of them. And this doesn't necessarily mean that they're not good, it could just mean that they're not on the level of some of the movies that they have had recently. Reason two being they're just older movies and they're from earlier on in A24's life maybe before they knew exactly what they were doing and knew exactly what projects they were gonna take on and what was gonna do well. Being the size that they are now with the experience they have, I'm sure it's a lot easier for them to know what's gonna succeed and what's not. And even though they are still an indie studio, technically they can be more picky about what they choose. The third reason being, the movies are just in the middle between bad and good. They're not offensively bad or bad enough to make a commentary YouTube video called The Worst Movie I've Ever Seen, but they aren't a quote-unquote masterpiece either, so they just get swept under the rug. All those points kind of cross into each other in one way or another, and there's no definitive one answer, obviously. So for this final portion of the video, I'd like to present some data to show a little bit more of a quantitative side of all of this. Welcome, everybody. Class is in session, so as you can see here, I've meticulously put together a spreadsheet with every single A24 movie on it, at least from this Rotten Tomatoes list, that was called All A24 Movies Ranked, so I think there's a couple missing when I was fact checking with a Wikipedia list, but this is a pretty good overview. It's pretty much every single movie A24 has ever had a hand in since they started back in 2012. As you can see here, I've listed the movie, the release date, the critic score, the audience score, and if A24 distributed and produced it or just distributed the movie. As you can see over here by this lovely graph that I've made, it's actually pretty interesting. So if you look at our legend here, you can see that the blue is the critic reviews, the red is the audience review scores, and the yellow is both. So like an average of all the scores from each category I've made. And in each case, for all the credited movies they've had, the critic score is always higher than the audience score, which when I was looking at the individual scores, all the movies that have like 99s and 98s on Rotten Tomatoes by the critics have like an 80 by the audience. And there were some that had higher audience scores than critic scores, but there were only a few of those. I think The Whale was one of them. The lowest critic score is a lot lower than the lowest audience score, but the highest critic score is also, so the range is a lot wider, I guess you would say, for the critic scores and the audience scores. If you want to just look at all the reviews combined, you can pay attention to the yellow bar because that's 
like all the scores, the critics and the audience. You can see for all credited movies, the average score was at 69%. It's not as high as you would think. Like if you were to guess the average score of all A24 movies, you would think it might be higher than 69%, but I don't know. At least I would think so. So that first bar was all credited movies. So distributed and distributed and produced movies. If we look at the bar where they had a producer credit as well, so they distributed and produced the movie, we can see that it's actually a 74.5%. So it's about 5% higher average score of the movies that they've produced and distributed. I've also separated it by release date. So from 2012 to 2017, I put those movies in a group and then 2018 to 2023, I put those in a group as well. The average score of movies in the first few years of them being a company had an average of 64.2% and in the last few years since then have had an average of 74%. So my theory of the movies getting a little bit better over time or being better in the past few years does seem to be holding a little bit true since that percentage is 10% higher than the movies originally. I've now sorted them by release date. So we can see all the movies from beginning to now, to the end of 2023. And if you look at the distribute or produce column, you can see at the start, almost all of them are just distributed by A24. And then we'll keep going, and it's not until Moonlight in 2016, four years after they started as a company, that they were also a producer credit on one of their movies. And of course, if you know a little bit about film, you know that Moonlight won an Oscar for Best Picture. And then you can see a few more are distributed, but then look, a couple more where they were distributed and produced. So then we keep going down, and as you go down and get closer to 2023, you can see that they've produced more and more movies than like this little chunk here. All of these movies were produced by them also, not just distributed. In the latter half, they are producing a lot more of their movies as well as distributing, which is interesting. So then when we go back to our chart, we can see that their produced movies have a better average score than all of their movies. And we can see that their movies from more recently in time have a better average score than the first few years they were around. As time goes on, their movies are getting better scores on average, but we don't know if that's because they're just getting better over time picking the movies they're gonna have their name attached to, or if it's because they have specific producer credits as well. If I had to guess, I would say that's probably it, but from this data alone, I don't think we can come to a specific conclusion like that. I'll put a link to this spreadsheet in the description. So if you guys want to kind of take a look at it, you can see kind of specifically like the scores and stuff because I just kind of did like a little overview. But back to your regularly scheduled programming. In conclusion, does A24 actually make good movies? I don't know. They're movies. They're all subjective. <laughs> Unless it's the death of Dick Long, in which that movie sucks, and I will absolutely die on that hill. If you want an actual conclusion, yeah. Yeah, they do make good movies. I wanted to make this video because I feel like a lot of people say A24 can't make a bad movie, or anytime they see a movie with A24 attached to it, they just automatically assume it's gonna be amazing. And really, they can't make a bad movie. What does that even really mean? As I very much laid it out in this video, it's a lot more than just A24 made the movie or they didn't. Sure, you could say they all have a similar vibe, they just have that A24 charm. But like, really? All of them? Even the bad ones? Or is that vibe just because you're watching an indie movie and you would get that same feeling if you were watching any other indie movie? I'm not trying to tell you how to think or feel, I'm just genuinely asking you those questions. Maybe look into some of your favorite A24 movies and see what else is kind of connecting the dots. Are they directed by the same person? Do they have the same leading actor or actress? Are the other production companies tied to it that aren't A24 the same? Maybe it turns out you're just a fan of that company's work. 
Hi, editing Zach, just coming to jump in real quick. I don't want this video to come off as like overly negative because I'm not trying to sound like these people are just complete idiots for thinking A24 only makes good movies because the movies they've seen, they think are good movies. So why would they have a different opinion? I guess what all kind of like came together for me was I just saw this comment when I was looking for comments for this video. This person basically says A24 is the only studio left putting out good movies. And I just don't want people to think that that's the case. Sure, the big studios might not be putting out the best things lately. You can have that opinion. That's a completely valid opinion to have. But there are so many smaller studios other than A24 that are also putting out amazing work. And so I think that's the biggest thing is I was trying to convey was, was that A24 isn't the only studio left to rely on to make good movies. There are other ones out there, 100%, even though it might be a little bit more work to find them, that doesn't mean A24 is the only one left. Just an example, one of my favorite indie movies ever is a movie called Shit House, directed by Cooper Wraith. So good. I don't know what it is. I love so much about it, but it is so good. So if you have the opportunity, check that one out. That's not an A24 movie. It's IFC, I think. Check out IFC, another studio I've heard about recently, Neon. I've heard they're putting out really good stuff. I don't have the exact data to back it up. I can't even act like I've seen all these movies because I haven't. I just don't want people to think A24 is our only hope from getting good movies because it's not. That was a lot about nothing, but uh, enjoy the conclusion. <laughs> A24 aren't this King Midas of filmmakers where everything they touch turns into gold. I will admit, obviously they have some very high highs, but they have some pretty low lows as well. I didn't make this video to trash on A24 or anyone that supports them. Obviously. I just thought it was an interesting case study, if you will. I honestly learned a ton of stuff. I didn't know A24 didn't produce all their movies, or even that they just had so many movies. And this is something I would look into on my own time if I was curious about it, so why not make a video out of it if I can? At least one of you had to have found it interesting. Hats off to A24 for getting so big and finding success where they have, but also fuck you for making me tear up over rocks. Oh!